ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies, and this is going to be a short video. What I'm doing right now is I was finishing up some finishing touches to the different contracts. And then I noticed that, wait a minute, this could be necessary. And so I added a couple of statements that I know from research needs to be there. These are general statements. This is not important, important, but they should be there, including information referencing the arbitration clause to give no wiggle room. Because the first thing the courts are trying to do, the reason why they're taking so long, the reason why the appeals court has not ordered a response to any one of the 11 appeals we have before the federal appeals courts is because they're trying to figure out a way around the clauses in the contract. We, we know that. that. That's the only reason why they delayed. Other than that, they would have uh, dismissed, 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 dismissed. No merit, frivolous, you know their favorite word, frivolous, meritless, all of those words that they use. Well, they can't do it. And so that's why they're, it's been over a year and a half. We're being patient because it's time to go to the Supreme Court on these very issues. You see, either we get to do arbitration or they don't get to do arbitration. Because if we can't do it, they can't do it. But if they can do it, you better believe we going to do it. So those of you who haven't had enough faith, those of you who've been trotted down, those of you who've been beaten up by the system, I can't help you. But those of you who want to learn something, let me give you something that I just went through and I said I cannot refrain. I cannot hold back this information from these people because these people need to know this information. But you already know this. Yes, but these people don't know this information. And so I want to make sure that they have some place to get started. Do you all know what procurement means? I don't know what a procurement is. Well, let me show you something. See, I put in this phrase right here. Any attempt to alter or interfere with the provisions because that's in our contract. And the first thing that came up was documents on procurement and tendering. Oh, tendering, that is, man. That just, oh, she's so tender, you know. And I, I, I had me a sirloin steak. Oh, lordy, lordy. Okay, look, ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. Legal status of tender. This is Australia. I'll be putting these documents up, ladies and gentlemen. What you must first understand is what tender is and what tender is not. Okay, pay attention right here. Using the RTF by a party who, for the purposes of this paper, is referred to as a principal, requesting that a tenderer that's you, your tender, <laughs> submit a tender, that a tenderer submit a tender, that is a twist of words, ain't it? Is no more than an invitation to treat, which has been described in Butterworth's Australian Legal Dictionary as a request to negotiate or make an offer with the contract in mind. Issuing a request for tender. I don't know exactly what RTF. I have to go back up. Request. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't read that part until just now. Anyway, I literally just said it and I wasn't. I told you I don't read ahead. I really don't. I focus on what's in front of me. So sorry. And oh, Lord, if you don't believe me, I don't give up. Okay, anyway, issuing a request for tender is not in law. Regards as an offer. Now they say when a person is making a request for tender, it says it is not in law regarded as an offer. That's a lie. That's a lie. See, they they nitpick with the statute. When somebody sends you a bill, and that bill is not equal to what was agreed to in the original contract, then somebody is sending you something wanting to change the terms of the agreement. When somebody says, hey, we need you to pay this, they're making you an offer because it's not a demand for payment. Go ahead and look up that subject, okay? Now look, authority makes it clear 
that the starting point is that a simple, uncomplicated request, i.e. a simple contract for bids, will generally be no more than an invitation to treat, not giving rise to contractual obligation, although it may give rise to obligation to act fairly. Ladies and gentlemen, let me explain to you. If somebody requests a tender for payment, and this tender for payment is not in the exact form for which the contract stated individuals were negotiating because go ahead and look pay attention go ahead and look at all of your original contracts none of them says anything about somebody sending you a bill a bill is an offer okay watch this i'm just going to do this real quick and then i'm going to get on about my business because we got several documents that i'm downloading for you all uh we're going to put Let's do the Google search. I don't want to search up there. It might give me something else. A B I L L is an O F F E R to T E N D E R P A Y M E N T. Google, what do you say? Go ask Google. 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 If tender a payment of an obligation to pay an instrument is made to a person entitled to enforce the instrument, the effect of tender is governed by who is it governed by? Arnold Schwarzenegger? Wait a minute. Hold on. Tender a payment and obligation of an instrument is made by a person entitled to enforce the instrument. The effect of the tender is governed by the principle of law applicable to tender a payment under a simple, <clears throat> simple, <clears throat> simple contract. Now, if you go to Australia, Australia says it's not a contract. Australia, that's what it says, with a contract in mind. But Australia says, hey, uh, a request for tender is not in legal. I mean, excuse me, legal and law, the way they say law, see lowercase, regarded as an offer. Now, under the Uniform Commercial Code, which is international, it's not just the United States, it is an offer to contract. If tender a payment of an obligation to pay an instrument is made to a person entitled to enforce the instrument, and the tender is refused, there is discharge. There is discharge. This is automatic. Can't get around it. There is discharge of the obligation. Because remember, there was an obligation to payment of an obligation. If it is refused, there is discharge. Pay attention to the amount tendered. To the amount tendered. When you do it right, 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 of the obligation of an endorser or accommodation, accommodation, accommodation party having a right of recourse with respects to the obligation to which the tender relates. So it says they got a right of recourse. What's their right of recourse? Well, pay attention. If it is discharged, if it is refused, if tender is refused, it is discharged. You cannot pay because there is no money. You cannot pay because there is no money. You cannot pay because there is no money. Treasury says that the dollar bills that they got circulating out there, them only circulating notes, those are only. Pay attention. Temporary script issued by the banks. They're called emergency script because that emergency script has been determined by the Treasury and the official website of the United States government under legal tender status to have no value. Then obviously, you don't have the ability to pay your bills which means the government is liable. One last thing, one last thing, one last thing, one last thing, one last thing. Ladies and gentlemen, a young lady contacted me the other day, said, hey, 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 I contacted the treasury and I got myself a treasury direct website. You know, they shut my site down and they, they said that we, don't, uh, we ain't gonna let you do no treasury direct anything. We think you are attempting to commit fraud. What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Ladies and gentlemen, the treasury or any other government agency accuses you of doing anything that you haven't done? Say, oh no, I'm sorry. I, I must rebut your presumption. What I'm doing is following the law. Here is the law. Now, if you can show me something where this ain't the law no more, and that I don't have this as a right, 
then by all means, I will cease and desist. But until such time, you need to get out of my way. So I need you to escalate this because I'm appealing your presumptive decision. Just that simple. Just that simple, people. Just that simple. Now, I got work to do. You got work to do like the Isley Brothers. I got work to do. Okay? And I, I want to know. Okay, I got work to do. So y'all have a good day. I will see y'all later. I got to go. I got to go. I got to go. And when I get there, I ain't taking none of y'all with me. Bye-bye. Got to go. Got to go. Oh, oh it, it disappeared. I need my, um, my, 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 my. Y'all can't see it because they're at the bottom of the screen, but it disappeared. Bye-bye.